Hey guys, right, here's a short presentation on the internal structure of a turbocharger as well as its bearing system. What we're going to cover in this presentation is really simple. We're going to talk about the axial plane and the radial plane and the bearings that govern and manage those two planes. When these bearing systems fail, we will discuss the types of failures that occur and the resulting damage to the rotating assembly. Now, starting off, we have, first of all, an oil feed. Let's talk about the oiling system. So there's your oil feed. Usually you'll have a steel pipe which is fed into the turbocharger through this port here. As you can see, those threads, it usually screws in here, or there might be a, a flange face which screws. There might be a hole with thread over here and on the opposite side where you'll have a flange that basically mounts and screws onto. And that line, that feed line, is fed from the engine's um, block or the head, and you will basically share the same oil as the oil fed into the engine by the same oil pump. Now, as the oil enters the bearing housing, it splits three ways. One comes to the side over here, which goes to your thrust bearing. That is the thrust bearing over there. The second split goes to your journal bearing on the compressor side. That's the compressor wheel. And the third split goes down to the journal bearing on the turbine side. That's your turbine side. Now, these types of bearings are known as fully floating bearings because the bearing itself moves inside of the bearing housing and the shaft turns inside of the bearing. So that is called a fully floating bearing system. Now, you do get semi-floating bearing systems where the bearing itself will basically be held in place and prevented from rotating in the bearing housing while only the shaft rotates inside of the ID of that bearing. The two journal bearings manage and govern your radial plane, that is up and down. Your thrust bearing, which is this bearing over here, manages and governs your axial plane along the axis, along the axle. I'll draw your attention to the clearance between the turbine wheel radius profile and the turbine housing radius profile where the two mate. And that is basically what you're looking at now. You'll find that on this specific turbo, this is off a and a Mercedes-Benz OM501. So it's a relatively large turbocharger. And as I turn this rotating assembly, have a look at the clearance in that area there between the machined housing and this radius profile on the blade itself. You'll see that it's between 0.4 and 0.5 of a millimeter in this specific case. Now we're going to move across to the compressor side and you will see the very same thing. So let's just turn this slightly to get more light on the subject. And you'll find that, have a look at the radius profile of that blade and the radius profile machined into the housing over there. As I turn this wheel, you'll actually see that clearance, follow the blade, you'll see the clearance is approximately 0.35 to 0.45 of a millimeter on either side. So if you have a bearing failure or your bearing system is compromised in any way where you have excessive play, you get abnormal wear in the radial profile or plane and or the axial plane, what you will find is that your blades on either side will make contact with the mating end housings. Now, how that happens is if there is particulate contamination, let's say, for example, you have dirty oil, you've got particles in the oil through carbon buildup, and the, the carbon finds its way through the oil feed line into the bearing system, it will wear the shaft to ID of the bearing, journal bearing, as well as the thrust pads on the thrust bearing on either side. And as these wear, because of the speed of the rotating assembly, which in this specific case is between 70 and 90,000 RPM under no, normal uh, operating conditions, you'll find that the wear is extremely fast and you'll start to generate excessive play in both planes. As that happens, if you, for example, only have excessive play in your 
journal bearings or radial plane, you'll find that the side of these blades and the side of the turbine wheel blade will make contact with its mating housing and not the radius profile. That's the radius profile there, the rounded edge. That section over there will not make contact. If you have excessive play in the axial plane, you will find that the radius profile will thrust up against its mating machine surface in the mating housings. So if you have both wear, excessive wear, excessive enough to allow the rotating assembly to touch the housings, in both planes you will find that there will be contact between both the side of the blade and the radius profile. I just wanted to talk to you a little bit more about the sealing system in a turbocharger. So you have seals, they actually are not seals because seals are usually made of rubber and there are no rubber components inside of a turbocharger that form part of the sealing system. And the reason is rubber cannot handle the temperatures and or the friction generated from the rotational speeds. These are known as split seal rings and they are, as you can see, there is the, the ring gap. And you'll find that on both the compressor and turbine side, which you'll see over there, there's its gap just in front of the little pointer that I'm using. And as you'll see, when the rotating assembly turns, the ring remains stationary and the thrust collar, where the ring is mounted onto, rotates and the ring actually uh, rotates inside of an, a ring groove on both the thrust collar and if you look at the turbine side, there's a ring groove inside of the shaft itself. So the ring remains stationary and the shaft rotates as the ring essentially rotates inside of a ring groove. Now that is what forms your sealing system. Very quickly, we're going to talk about foreign object damage. We'll start with the turbine side. And on the turbine side, you will actually see the inducer blades of the turbine is this section over here. Those inducer blades, which is the entry, the inlet of the gases coming through the turbine housing, which basically come through the turbine from this side all the way around the housing to the tongue, which basically then directs the air into these inducer blades and then exits out in that direction past the exducer blades. Now if you have a look at the size of the blades, you'll notice that the inducer blades are wider than the exducer blades. Now take a careful look at where the inducer blades operate. They operate inside of an air gap, inside of the turbine housing itself. It is not possible for anything other than incoming gases to contact these blades. That is what drives the turbine. The gas is coming through the housing. And if something is ingested through the exhaust manifold into the turbine housing, the first component or the first part of any rotating assembly that they contact will be the inducer blade. And that is the direction of rotation. That is the correct direction of rotation. And you will always find that anything coming into contact with these blades will impact these blades, damage them, and bend the blade in the opposite direction of rotation. And that is usually valve guides or a piece of a valve or maybe sometimes pistons that have melted in an engine failure. It's not uncommon. Let's talk about foreign object damage on the compressor side. So at the moment you're looking at the compressor inlet. This is the inlet. These are the, the blades that you'll see. This is covered. Obviously, there's a cutout here, so you can expose the exducer blades here. But when you're looking at a turbocharger's inlet, you will only be able to see the inducer blades visible. That's the inlet. And these are the exducer blades, obviously wider than the inducer. It's opposite on the turbine side. And the f only thing protecting these blades during operation is your air filter. If anything comes through the 
air filter or if anything passes the air filter, the first part of the compressor wheel that will be contacted will be the leading edge, that very edge over there of the blade and obviously the underside of the blade. And usually because this is made of aluminium and the rotational speed is so fast or so high, you will always see a lot of damage to these blades as a result of ingestion of the 10 millimeter socket that everybody loses or a piece of the air filter or stones or dust or anything that might have been left in the intake tract or managed to get past the air filter itself.